sudden because we don't have my phone and I think if you will sit apart you can hear me clearly so I think it's better if you can come closer a little bit share the PowerPoint. Yes. So you can just probably chat me. chat me so that I can reply and then put the PowerPoint as an attachment. Okay. So my name in Messenger is Lito Kadao. No more, no less. <laughs> so meron pa bang parating? Yan, meron pang ilan. So let's wait for probably another couple of minutes we have limited time i think we need to end up 10 a.m so we're supposed to start 8 40 but because of some adjustments so we came to start on time and so we will just uh, probably begin after a couple of minutes so let's just wait for the others so I decided to set up a PowerPoint and then they'll see this so that uh, at least you can follow easily what I'll be sharing with you today. So I don't know if the language preference that we need to use is English or since uh, I think no one is... Uh, ah. <laughs> oh, there's a foreigner here. So I think we need to use our uh, second language so that we can understand each other. <laughs> Uh, buenos dias, amigo. <laughs> okay, so good morning to to everyone. So I think uh, since everyone is already here, I think we can now start. So why don't we request somebody to lead us in prayer so that we can begin after the prayer. So can we ask uh, Brother uh, Christian J to open our meeting and our lecture in prayer? Can we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we would like to thank you once more for this another Sabbath day. And especially for us, as we continue with this um, parting off, especially preparing ourselves to be equipped. We also bless Sir Kada as we present this, that each one of us will be enlightened. And each one of us will be uh, especially preparing ourselves, our mind and our heart in this ministry. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayer. Amen. 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 Okay. So because we don't have the luxury of time, so I think I need to skip some of the slides, especially some of the quotation of Ellen White. So and then after receiving the PowerPoint, you can just probably review, but I think I need just to cover some of the most important concepts that will be helpful for each one of you because you are the Bible study coordinator. So in other words, since you are assigned as interest coordinator, I think you need to do a lot of things so that you can be assured of the success of your BOY. So let's begin. Well, the contents of this uh, lesson and PowerPoint presentation is number one, about finding Bible study interest. How can we find Bible study interests? Second, we will try to understand how we will build interest among the people. And then number three, we will try to cover how to give simple and yet effective Bible study. And then the last part is bringing people to decision. I think these are but the things that you need to know as you involve in BOY and then lead and work as an interest coordinator. Okay, so let's begin. So in finding interest, the first thing that we need to consider is the OIKOS principle. What is OIKOS? Huh? In Greek, Oikos means house, Ayan. or household, but in the Bible, it is often used in the broader sense, not just as a house, but household or extended family. In a sense, in order for you to find Bible interests, as you reach your place of BOY, you need to talk to the members of the church to find out if there are members of the church 
who are not yet baptized. Did you get the point? So let us see. Because of that, try to consider family members who are not yet baptized. And that's the reason why in the very first Sabbath, in your BOA team, if there is an sponsoring church, you need to talk to the members of the church and even to the church board and then identify if there are members of the church who are not yet member or baptized. Let's say my family, I have two children and the eldest is already 13 years old and yet not yet baptized. So you can just consider that as your Bible interest, potential for Bible study and potential as well for baptism. Do you get the point? Because my eldest son or daughter is already 13 years old. Did you get the point? So, family members who are not yet baptized. And then, husband. Diba in the church, there are members of the church who happen to be, is either the wife or husband is not yet baptized. So you can, you need to identify those. So I think we can easily find Bible interest, right? What else? Oh, husband, wife, and then close relatives. Let's say somebody is staying with them. Or let's say, let's say the, the niece. Yeah, something like that. You can even consider those if they are not yet baptized and yet attending church worship, they are considered as potential by study interest at the same time potential for baptism. Sisiro pa kaya kayo? Yun ang unang focus. Focus on that. Okay. And then, of course, not only the active members of the church, how about the backsliders? And so, in order for you to gather and to list number of interest, you can even talk to the church clerk after arriving in your church. Talk to the church clerk. Please, sister, give us the list of backslider members of the church and then specify and tell us who are at least those who are at least probably attending worship service even once a year. Huh. At least meron pa yung apoy. Ano? Yan. At least, uh, still the member, that member is remembering attending worship. There's still a potential for them to be win back to the church. So, backslider members or family of the backsliders. Well, biblically speaking, from the life of Abraham, Joseph in Egypt until the time of the New Testament how people come to the Lord from every family. Diba? If you're going to observe the church, in the church, sometimes or usually, members are closely akin, relatives, diba? May mga magkakamag-anak. Okay. Anyway, let's leave some quotation, but this is very much related from the writings of Ellen White. Yes, it's quite good if we will concentrate on the family and then win other members of the family to be baptized in the church. Okay, now, let's proceed to the next one. This is another concept of oikos. Not only, you need to consider the members of the family who are not yet baptized. Either active or either backslider. So I think it's clear. Look at this. Not only the family, but even close friends of the family in the church. Let's say this elder, or the, let's say these active members of the church. Huh? If these active members of the church have friends outside the church who are not yet Adventists, you can even talk to them and then, Brad, do you have some friends whom you understand interested in our church? Or sometimes, you got the chance to invite them in worship. Let's try to visit them. And then you can even ask the support of the members of the church to join you in your visitation. Do you get the point? Okay. So, oh sorry. The close friends, working associates, and then the casual acquaintances. So, that's the first thing that we can consider in finding Bible interests. Okay. But aside from that, huh? That's why in BOY, you need to seek the help of the members of the church because the number one secret huh, in success of the BOY is you need to solicit and you need to seek 
the help and cooperation of the members of the church. Because if the members of the church will not tell to your team that I have a son who is not yet baptized in the church and he's already 14 years old, so you cannot have the chance to focus on that particular son or daughter of church members. Do you get the point? Okay, so who else? Well, interested individual who visit the church now and then. Diba? I think you are, you are aware of that, especially in Sabbath school. Huh? There are people in the community that from time to time, they are showing up in the church because from time to time, they as as well being invited. Diba? Ano? Ini-invite sila. Eh? Ano? At least, if the members of the church were asked, and you ask them, who among you, brothers and sisters, have friends that before you invited them to attend a worship meeting? Please help us, tell us their name, and then join us as well, accompany us so that we can visit them and we can invite them to our airport or BOY team. Did you get the point? Kaya meron na tayong mga target listener sa ating BOY. Huh? But if you will fail to do that, and the members of the church will not huh? sabihin natin network and then ask them to invite and help you inviting them in the church, they will not attend. That's why cooperation of the church must be sabihin natin ano, sila ay ready to support. And then what else? So sabi dyan, visitors who attended Sabah School and any other programs such as community guest day. Marahit ang iba. Hindi lang marahit tayong program ay. What else? Individuals who have completed any of the Bible correspondence programs. Those people who completed answering BOY lessons. Ah, sorry. Voice of Prophecy. Hindi pala BOY. BOP lessons. Yan. Maraming ganyan. And sometimes, they completed Bible correspondence course in previous evangelistic effort. We need to follow up those. Yan. Ano pa? Parents of children who attended vacation Bible school or branch Sabbath school. That's why it's quite important if the church wants to sponsor BOY, I think they need as well to do some necessary preparation. Did you get the point? And so at least, that's actually can generate Bible interest. So I think it's now clear. And then, friends from oh, the harvest in gathering. Pwede rin, di ba? Okay. And then, what else? Sabi dito, hindi lang yon. non-SDA students studying in our Adventist school and their parents. Remember, Ira, during our previous school, so, we ha I have a former student, so he is about she is about to graduate here in AUP and because the group of youth in the church together with the theology student, they were able to contact and so she was baptized at the end of the voice of youth. See, because she was a student of AUP. Oh, that's the first one here. And then regular customers of our literature evangelist. If there are LEs in the church, you can even ask them if you are the interest coordinator. Brad, do you have some friends in the community who are interested in the Bible study? Can we visit them? Join us, accompany us, and you can visit them. Okay, so yun daw. At ang sabi sa atin, those who have attended our evangelistic meetings, but have not made decision of Jesus before, you can even follow up them. So ngayon, my question is, makakakuha na ba kayo ng Bible interest o hindi? Come on, tell me. Sinong pupuntahan? Oh, sagot na kayo. But aside from that, my dear students, ha? yun ay mga tip, ha? how to at least find Bible interest. How about new interests? Yan, okay. BOY attendees. Because before the BOY, you're going to what? 
to saturate the area and visit the people around the BOY venue, right? And so, if somebody responded and attend the BOY, well, you need to follow up them. Did you get the point? Because those attendees who responded to the invitation are somewhat interested and that's the reason why they attended your first night of, or second night of meeting. And that's the reason why you are aware that you need attendance every night. Diba? So that you can be able to find those who attended. And those who attended the first night, you need to visit them, I believe, the following day. And the purpose of visit is just to appreciate their presence last night. And then encourage them, please sister, we want you to be in our uh, meeting again tonight. And we appreciate your presence last night. Magunan ba yung ha? <laughs> Don't just immediately give Bible study saying, Oh Brad, thank you so much that you are you attended our meeting last night. I think we need to start a Bible study today. <laughs> and then the next night, you will not attend again. <laughs> Be friends. Yes, Establish first friendship. Sino pa? Ayan. Respondents of a survey before BOY. If you want to hold or to conduct community survey, if people are interested in Bible study or listening to health lecture, you can visit them. What this? My interest sila. And then, anybody from the facility. So in short, iiwan na natin to, ha? Ayan. These are the possible and potential Bible interest, right? Children of church members. Close relatives of church members. Close friends of church members. And then graduates of Bible correspondence course, backsliders and family members, interest of the literature evangelists, huh? interest for have been from sa piyating hospital or medical outreach, when sabas kung interest or parents of the children who attended the vacation Bible school, and then sabas kung members who are not yet church members. The question, how to find Bible interest? Iwahan natin ito. Kung walang question, let's move forward to the next. Mariwanan? Huwag kayong mahihiyang magsabi sa mga kaanib na church. Ha? Don't be shy asking your help. Because in order for you to find Bible interest, you need to do your effort and the members as well is to cooperate. Kakaintindihan na tayo. Ano? Pwede na? Alam na ang gagawin, ha? Okay, and then talk to the church clerks. Please give us the list of the bus riders and then identify those who are still showing up in the church from time to time. And then, the moment you visit the bus riders, you will even know if there are members of the church who are not yet baptized. And the good thing about this is, at least because they are poor members, members of the church, they will not Sabihin natin, they will cooperate if you tell them, can we give Bible study to your children? I think they will just agree. Kasi hindi prejudice, ano? Okay, now. So, after gathering and listing the possible Bible interests, okay, here are the things that you need to do. Okay? So, create the lists. And then you need not just to list, but to classify. What does that mean? What does classification or classifying means? Ano yung just read? Ito, ito yung batikano na ito eh. Ano yung, ano yung classifying Bible interest? Categorizing whether and try to identify who among this possible and Bible interest are considered class A or type A. When you say type A, ready for baptism. Kaya unang linggo pa lang, alam mo na kung kayo ay itlog or zero or not. In fact, you can even hold baptism in the first Sabbath after a week of labor. Diba? If there are already plus A. 
and you need to focus on this because these people are, are already assured for the visa. Uuwi kayong, di ba ang natang report? We baptize 50 members, 50 souls in our BOY. Parang nantang hat na, gano'n. Tayo nga atin. Ay, huwag lang kayong magyabang. Sabihin nyo, with the help of the Lord and with our united effort, we baptize at least 50 souls. 50 souls only. Ay, para sa alam na yun. Ano? <laughs> okay. Then, try to identify the class B. Eh, sino yung mga type B? Yun na yung mga taong at least they are considering that the doctrines of Adventists are significant and relevant and truth and then but they are not yet baptized but more but eager to learn more about seven day Adventists. Huwag na natin yan. Huwag natin patagalin. And then sino yung type C? Huh? Yun yung mga sabihin natin first time na maging connected sa Seventh day Adventist, Adventist Church. And the last one is try to consider as well yung mga type C. Yan. Type C Kuya J, Type C Kuya Jesrin, <laughs> Type C Kuya Renz. Bakit? Eh kasi sapagkat may kras sa iyo, type ka, potential Bible study rin yun. Di ba? Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay ba yun? <laughs> oh. Do you agree with me? Mm -hmm. huh? Because they want to see you from time to time, you may even ask them, are you interested to study the Bible? Though that person is interested to you, he or she may as well be interested to the doctrine of the church and of course to accept the Lord. Do you agree with me? Amen. Eh, sa gagawa po ninyo yan, sa gaganda ninyo yan, iyak maraming type C. Kuya, kuya CJ, di ba? Oh. Type C. Oh. And we cannot... Anyway, I am just adding this. But there's, there are some truth about it. Yes, they are as well potential Bible study. But don't take advantage. In a sense that you will learn. Instead, focus on sharing the gospel to this person who knows that someday he will fully understand our doctrine and then later on he or she will be baptized. Kita mo sa langit. Pagdating sa langit hindi ka na class mo. <laughs> Ayun kasi doon na ano na. Tayo I will be like like and by angels. Okay? So I think everything is clear. So ngayon Papaano palalakasin ang how can we build and establish interest for Bible students? Ayan, okay? Well, I think this is not new. I'm going to skip some slide. In order to strengthen and establish our friendship and to sabihin natin build interests, well, we just need to follow Christ's method because according to Ellen White, Christ's method alone will bring true success in reaching people. And how? Well, sabi sa atin, our Savior went from house to house. Kaya in BOY, aside, of, aside from focusing on your interests, you need as well huh, to grab the opportunity to visit those households in the area. Because you will never know when again, another airport will be exerted on that particular place. And, and, and then you miss visiting some household. Masayang yung pagkakataon. And so because of that, you need as well to do house-to-house -house visit. Anyway, then Jesus Christ healed the sick and then He comforted the mourners. I think you are aware of that. And then soothing the afflicted and then, what else? Speaking peace to the disconsolate. And then, blessing children. Those are some of the things that Jesus had done. And so, in relation to that, you can even follow these principles. You know what? A saying goes, If you will hold children's hand, you will hold as well parents' heart. Do you believe in that? 
And that's why, don't just take, bagay took for granted yung children's ministry. It may even probably lead uh, to uh, the parents, and then you may even, kubagay even the spirit of prejudice, or sabi natin, skepticism will be removed. Okay, so yun na. So nagtawa ng atin yung ilang slides. I think this best must be related on that. So didagi ko naman sa inyo yung lesson. These are the biblical uh, foundations on house tours visitation. And then of course, making friends with the people in the community. It's very important. And then be friendly to all people. Yeah. Ano ang atin yan? Right? So I so because of that, in a sense, or in short, we need home visitation. Uh, and then in visitation, here are possible things that you can do. Of course, Bible study. And then, seven eating. You can join them in their work. You know, one of the police school, the other before the pandemic, some of the students join the people in the community in planting rice. And then, while they are planting rice, these students are giving Bible study to them. And at the end of the airport, some of them were baptized. Alam niyo sila, Hilwin, saka yung si Grems, si Grems, nagtalok talaga yung mga yun doon sa Norte. <laughs> and so, several days, they are helping them in the rice paddies, planting rice. And then, yes, because they are helping them, so, during the night, they are attending the meeting. <laughs> and you will really enjoy the ministry as you join them in their common walks of life. That's another experience. You may be saying, oh, you know, we experience harvesting mangoes. Ah, wala pa na pag December, ano? <laughs> we join them in harvesting whatever in their field. And you will enjoy everything. Okay? Anyway, of course, you can eat and bring food and eat with them. Punta kayo. Pupunta po kayo bukas dyan sa inyo. Yan, sabihin nyo. Mas maganda nga. Basta punta po dyan sa inyo. Pagin kayo ng mga, lawan ako ang inyong Bible study, mga 10, 10, 10, 10 a.m. Yan, 10 a.m. Okay. Kakain na po tayo. Tapos na po ang Bible study. Okay? Our Bible is ready done. So we're going to it now. And we bring, we bring food. This kind of thing. And so, of course, help them in their needs if there are means. Well, because we have limited financial support and budget, I think we cannot just do it. Diba? But yes, if it is possible, even extending some financial help, generate Bible interest, and then win people's confidence. Okay, and then ask to join the BOA team in some activities like the youth in the community. But in inviting them to join you in some activities, of course, you need to inform and seek parents' permission. And sometimes, even playing with them is helpful. Like you just read, you are playing basketball. You can join. Actually, one time we experienced, actually, I hold simple basketball league. So we enjoy. Oh, let's have sports festival. And so I want you, young, I want you youth here in the area to form at least three basketball team. And I prepare a little amount of money. So the champion will receive at least 1,000 pesos. Tatlong team lang naman ay. Di yung pangalawa, at least they will receive 500. And then the last will receive 200. At least. Maghapon lang sa Sunday. One whole Sunday we have, we have basketball. Yeah. We really enjoy everything. And then we won the confidence of the youth. Kahit yung mga tambay, walang manggugulo ng inyong BOY pag yung mga tambay doon ay nagapakinig nyo gabi-gabi. They will be interested as well. Those are some of the techniques and tips in order for you to win even the confidence of those bystanders nearby. They will attend your nightly meeting. In fact, sometimes our problem is we are focusing on ladies. And the moment we focus on ladies, 
those gentlemen in the area are becoming jealous later on, they will be your, your enemy. And so be careful in dealing with people. That's why it's as well very important if you can join them in some sabihin natin mga activities. Okay? So home visitation, iwan natin because we need to proceed to the next one. So wala na question about finding Bible interest and then establishing more their interest in the church or in the doctrines. Wala na. Iwan na natin to. Handa na kayong maglista ano. Okay, let's proceed now in giving Bible study. Because I think, aside from the speaker, as Bible interest, you will as well lead in Bible study. Kaya kung hindi kayo handa, maghanda na kayo. <laughs> okay, yan. Well, sabi sa atin, let's begin with quotation from Ellen White. Our work has been marked out for us by our Heavenly Father. We are to take our Bibles and go forth to warn the world. So it's but a simple command denoting that we need to give Bible study. Right. Now, in giving Bible study, the first thing that you need to consider is preparation. And what do you think? are the preparation that are needed in order for your Bible study effective. Huh? I'm going to repeat. In giving Bible study, the bottom line and the most important thing is the preparation. And let's proceed with the preparation needed in giving Bible study. Like what I said, as Bible interest, surely you will lead in giving Bible study. So, preparation needed. Number one, heart preparation. Right now, please, my dear young people, prepare your heart in your head. Okay. And the example that Jesus gave is before every major event in his ministry, Jesus prayed for guidance and help. Imagine that. Imagine that. Jesus himself recognized the importance and significance of relationship with the Father in order for his effort to become successful. Because if you are not connected, to the outlet, electric current will not flow. If you are not connected with the source of power, your airport will remain powerless. And so the first one is heart preparation. So we need to make ourselves right with God. Hmm? And then we need to pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We need to pray that the Holy Spirit will not just be within us, but within. Iba kasi yun ay, within, with us, is different than within. Within me. Hindi lang dapat kasama ang Holy Spirit, dapat nasa atin. We need the Holy Spirit within. Not just with us, but within us. Okay? So the first one is heart preparation. That's very important. Okay? So anyway, there are quotations here. I'm not going to read it one by one. But you can even read by biblical passages saying, My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. And then, but ye shall receive power. I think this is the most powerful biblical foundation that in order for us to be powerful, we need to receive the Holy Spirit. And that's the reason why we will be God's witness not only in your household, but even in other areas. So I think it's clear. So even natin yan. So even James 4, 7 and 8, yan saying, Submit yourselves therefore to God, which is the devil, and he will flee from you, draw nigh to God, and he will draw near nigh to you. Okay. So those are the biblical principles. Now, ano nga yung unang preparation? 
heart preparation. Okay na? Next. Materials preparation. Meron na ba kayong material? Sa Bible study? Walang problemang magdala ng Bibliang Ingles. At gumamit ng Bibliang Ingles kung yung bahay bustadihan nyo ay English speaking. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say, ha? Huh? I think because you're going to deal with people who are speaking common vernacular, bring Bible fitted to the vernacular of the people in the community. Ito si Rens, walang problema, marunong magtagalog ito eh. <laughs> Yan, kaya walang problema. <laughs> Magaling itong taong ito, ay di... Pero hindi lang sa Ingles. Sa Ingles talagang walang doubt. Pero talagang kita ka talagang magtagalog rin. Di ba? Yan. Okay. At least you know how to speak Tagalog. There's no problem with that. Pero sometimes pag sakit tayo sa Ingles, namawala. <laughs> Yan. Okay. But at least you need to contextualize yung language preference in giving Bible study. You get the point? Okay. So what are the basic tools that you need? Well, Bible is the first one that you need to go. Don't go to war without your weapon and arm. Kung taka sa gera, wala anda ng Biblia. Ah, wala anda ng baril. Sabihin ng pambahan na lang po ako sa kanyon. Pwede na. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Huh? Before you go to war, you need to prepare your armor and then you need to prepare your weapon. And so, because we are the soldier, and we will be battling against principalities. So what we need first is relationship with God. And then the next one is our Bible. So, kakaintindihan tayo. And if you can find a Bible with concordance, it's helpful. Next, what else? The next one is Bible study guide. Do you have Bible study guide? Anyway, yan natin. I have here some simple Bible study outline. This one is Bible study outline in English and in Tagalog. A very simple Bible study outline. We just limited Bible text because Bible study is not too long. Huh? In fact, 30 minutes is enough and the maximum is 40 minutes. Don't give Bible study for an hour. <laughs> and the following day or before you leave they may be saying well we have something to do tomorrow I think it's better if we can just continue the next day or the, the, the other day and then you will never find them again <laughs> and so if you don't have you can just photocopy this one and then the other part is Batagalo okay Ganyan. and then if you encounter the book Timeless Truth, this is but a good simple Bible study outline. Marami tayo. I can even send you yung kay parang kay Don Batsilo. Yan. Pwede rin ito. And then this one, instruction, manual, new picture and aid, you can even use this. And there are so many Bible study outlines available now. What you need to do is just to prepare. Okay, so, those are the materials. Ayan, and then, kung meron kang picture and aid or other devices as, as laptop, it is helpful. May mga laptop naman kayo, ano? O, kaya at least, giving Bible study today is much, much easier compared before that you need to be Bible study. Ito ba kayo sabihin natin talaga? Wala talaga, kung di Bible. But on the other hand, remember, ha? Huh? Remember, there are places and homes that there's no electricity. How can you give Bible study if you just rely on your laptop? So prepare your Bible, mark your Bible, put your outline inside the Bible, the rest of the question, and then put some notes at the other end of the Bible, let's say your topic is about second coming. Lagay mo second coming, first verse. And then do the chain reference of your Bible study. The moment you start, 
surely you will end your Bible study even though you don't have outline in front of you. Did you get the point? The Bible marking. So at least those are the things that you need to do. Heart preparation, material preparation, but this materials is not enough unless you prepare yourself mentally in giving Bible study. What I'm trying to say is what? You need as well to study the Bible study outline. You need to know how to explain. You need as well to know when you're going and what kind of illustration you're going to use in giving Bible study. Kaya ang sabi dyan, mental preparation, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed by the Bible and the Word of God. Okay na. Heart preparation, preparation of material, and then mental preparation. Ayos na ano? Pwede na ano? Pwede na. May material na ano? Okay. Nahanda na ang puso. What will be the content of our Bible study? Well, of course, Bible study must start on introduction, right? Introduction. Introduction muna. And we need to always remember that introduction is very important because it is for the purpose of awakening the interest of the hearers. Huh? Kaya, we need to use some introduction that are captivating, attention-getting. Huh? Okay, let your introduction statement make a lasting impression. It can be, meron tayo ditong options. Halimbawa, it can be a short story. Yan. Pero wag yung introduction mo, sampung minuto na kagad. Don't do that. So if you're going to use short story as an introduction, just make and just make it sure that it is but just a short story. Important current events. O halimbawa, second coming ang topic mo. O ano yung mga current events? You can use those uh, current events as introduction or let's say an interesting text that introduces the topic. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And then, because introduction is very important and the reason for that is because it is like an appetizer that will make people crave the main dish. Kaya gawin mong nakakatakam ang introduction. Ha? Nakasalalay sa inyo yan. Okay, next. Of course, yung Bible study natin have the body. Okay. So the body is the main dish. Right. At ang sabi dyan, the body should satisfy the craving which is created by the introduction. So make sure since you introduce your topic and you get the attention. After getting the attention, so it captivated. So you you awaken their interest, so the body must be what? Be satisfied. Okay, and so, it must be a solid and a logical sequence from beginning to end. And I think, usually, Bible study outline are in logical sequence. But sometimes, you are not comfortable following the sequence and logic of the prepared outline. That's the reason why you need as well to study it so that if you want to modify it, you can just modify it so that you can share and discuss it easily. Did you get the point? Di ba? Itong mga sanayot Bible study, nakaraan siyang magbago ng outline. Ano? Binago mo, minodify mo. Because you are not comfortable on how that Bible study outline was arranged. And so because that, you need to modify it. Sometimes, you need to remove some Bible passages. Di ba? So that the Bible study will become easier and easily be understood. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's true. I think you get the point. That's true. Anyway, just uh, continue. Uy, meron lang tayong limitadong oras. 
And then, present the subject with conviction, leave room for the Holy Spirit. And your body. What else? Ang sabi sa atin, so in continuation, pick up verses, like what he said, pick up verses that are simpler and have a direct connection to your next verse. So sometimes we need to remove some passages. And then sometimes we just need to select the easiest one and the simpler one. Okay. What else? Ang sabi sa atin. So, be brief and direct to the point. Don't go around the bush. Sometimes we need to simplify explaining the meaning of the text. And then, end your study before the interest fades. Kaya pag napahaba, talagang wala tayong magawa. Ano? Kahit naman tayo sa klase, ano? Pagka na natagal na sang oras, tamad na tayong makinig. Ano? Wala tayong magagawa. Ganyan talaga. Anyway, tayo nasa study, kaya tayo mahaba-haba dito. Ano? Oh, ito pa. Ito yun, nagdadamihan na nga ako dito eh. Di ba ano? Madami na nga ito yung suggestion. Madami na ito actually. I think the maximum is 10 texts only. This is the recommended of the GC by the way. <laughs> Because I derived this from I, I see it. Ayan. And then, the introduction. Ano nga yung next? Body. The last part is the appeal and conclusion. Anyway, just to to look at some important concept here when in appeal and conclusion make sure that as you end your Bible study you need to summarize everything summarize what you have discussed you get the point and then you need to make sure that you cleanse when you say clenching it is confirming and you are settling everything and you are making sure that your listeners understood what you discuss. Parang sabihin mong, ito po yung ating diniscuss as part of the summary. Naunawaan po ba natin ang ating pinag-usama? And remember, the Holy Spirit is working while we are discussing the truth. And you know what? One time, I accompany somebody in Bible study. So I just sat in the Bible study and listened. And at the end, I said to myself, I find difficulty understanding his explanation. <laughs> and then the following day, I joined again. And then, In the Bible study, before we start, the leader asked the Bible interest, did you understand what we discussed yesterday? And then they said, yes, we clearly understood everything. Can you say something about what we discussed yesterday? And then he shared something. And I was amazed. And I realized that while the leader in the Bible study, the previous day, Though his explanation is not really clear, but because the Holy Spirit is guiding, at least the Bible interest understood the lessons. Because I saw Sabi ko, matagal na akong address, di ko naintindihan. May maintindihan ng Bible study interest. Anyway, that's true. So, appeal. So, after making things clear to them, and you verified whether they clearly understood the lessons, of course, you need to make an appeal. Are you ready? Now that we studied the signs of second coming of Jesus Christ, do you want to prepare for the glorious day of the coming of the Son of God? And if you want to be prepared, we need to continue studying the Bible. Please, there are no reason to return back the following day. Diba? Okay. And then of course, forecasting the next topic as well is very important. So you can mention and then tomorrow we will be discussing the next topic and our next topic is this. So meron ng idea. Ano? Okay. So, now. Ano na? Ito na. So meron na. Wala nang tanong. Pagod doon. Let's proceed now. So what to do at the study? Wala tayong oras. Tapos na tayo. 
Dami itong dapat sa inyo talaga. Marami talaga kayong dapat nag-aralan. Nagkumpara sa iba. Anyway, ito lang ha. Tama ba sa inyo natin? Bipang tungan. Don't come late on your Bible study. Or, if coming late will not be avoided, make sure that you can send a message. And that's the reason why even asking for their contact number is very important. And getting their contact number as well is very important because you may even remind them, we will come again tomorrow, okay po, please, we'll come on time. And, yeah, and if you will not be able to come, at least you can send message. I'm sorry, we'll be late for 10 minutes because of unavoidable results. Something like that. Okay, and then, be enthusiastic, cheerful, relaxed, and friendly. Don't give Bible study as if you are parang kayo ay pensionado. <laughs> be relaxed. Okay. And for you to be relaxed, and for you to be confident, you need to prepare yourself and your materials. Kasi pag di mo alam, <laughs> nagang nawala ka na. Okay. And don't be shy to open your outline while you are giving by the state. You may even tell them that all of us here are Bible students. And we are just the only one leading the study. And don't be shy to open your outline in front of you. And sometimes we have our cell phones. Diba? We have our cell phones. You can even use your cell phone in Bible study. But my dear young people, please, in giving Bible study, don't just use your cell phone. As much as possible, use your Bible hard copy. Okay. Gana lang ang gawin natin. And then, I think this is very common. Sit at the right place with the group. Sabi sa atin, it's best to sit in the circle. Wala nga siguro ang question dyan. Short introduction. Make sure everyone is introduced and comfortable. Especially during the first Bible study. You may even introduce everyone among the group. And I think as well, it's important to know the names of your Bible students. Ito rin. Actually, this is my weakness. I am somebody who finds difficulty in remembering names. <laughs> so, in giving Bible study, you need to know full well the name of your Bible students. Ayan. And then, be understanding. Because sometimes, there are some distractions, right? Let's say your Bible study interest is immoderate. Ay, magmaliit na anak. And so sometimes, this toddler is distracting. And if you have your company, probably your company or fellow may even help taking care of this toddler or the little one. So, oh, magkukin ko muna tayo sa bata. Kung nagbahagod siya sa nanay, kinaikwentuhan yung bata. May mga paraan ganyan yan. Ito, magalis dito dyan. Saka itong si CJ. Si <laughs> okay. Next, speak wisely of course. Huh? And then, ang dahil pa natin pag-usapan, begin with prayer. An opening prayer is brief but secret. Ah, sorry, sincere. By the way, napakahalaga ito ha. Don't pray that create skepticism and prejudice. Nagalugin ko ha, huwag kayong mananalangin na naglilikha ng prejudice. Manalangin tayo, ay katulik ko ha, ako yung gawag gusto tayo. Manalangin tayo, sabi ko, pagpanain na po ang aking apat na kaibigan, sana po'y maintindihan na ang kahutuhan at makasama ko sila sa pananampalataya. Tama o mali? Tama o mali? Bakit mali? Tama naman ano, pero mali. <laughs> Bakit tama? It is correct because it's our goal for them to be converted and be an Adventist. But because you mentioned that in your prayer, your Bible study interest will conclude it easily. Ah, the purpose why 
they are visiting us here and giving Bible study is because they want us to be an Adventist. And the following day, they will no longer join you in your Bible study. Sabag-sabag, magsasabadistahin pala tayong itong mga ito, kaya pala napunta dito. Bagamat yun talaga ang ating goal. Ano? But don't mention that in prayer that somehow, someday, we want them to be and to join us and be a believers. Anong palagay mo sa kaila? Hindi believe it? Come on. Don't do that. So, in short prayer, in Bible study, in opening your Bible study in prayer, be careful on the words that you are using in your prayer. You may just be say, Lord, as we study thy words, send the Holy Spirit so that each one of us can understand the truth and be able to apply. At least, walang diwa na magkasabadis na kayo. Diba? Masama yung ganun ka na lang, itakakapay. Pagsasabadistahin tayo ng mga ito, wag na tayo mag study. Okay, anyway, I hope it's clear. Ano pa? Give an introduction. Ah, wala na. <laughs> yeah. Give the introduction or review its high points. Speak slowly, clearly, with conviction. Okay? And then, other points or other sabihin nating mga tips. How to present Bible study? The best method is what? Still I believe, still I believe that the best method of giving simple Bible study is through question and answer. And in this method of question and answer, at least it even seek and facilitate cooperation. And then you are trying to prove something and establishing something to your hearers. Let's say your topic is about Sabbath. And the question is, what day today is the seventh day Sabbath? Is it Sunday? Or Saturday? Or Monday? Or any day you want? So, why don't you consult the Bible about this question? Then try to establish the answer biblically. Historically, or probably other, sabihin natin other proof. So those are, I believe, still the best way, or the best method of giving Bible study. So kaya ang sabi dyan, you will want to ask questions, how, when, where, which, what, who, and why. And then, Bible study is not a sermon. <laughs> okay, yeah. You are there to facilitate and to teach, not to preach. Kaya huwag mong sisigawan yung Bible study mo. Asikaw! Kaya nga po dapat na tayo natin ipagayin na sana! Sa harap na, so naunawaan po natin. So we understood today that the seventh day is no other than Saturday. So it is God's will for us to spend that day worshiping Him and then giving glory to Him together with members, together with our sabi natin fellow believers, something like that. And then, if possible, in question and answer, ask them to read Bible text. And this is the reason why we need to limit our Bible text in just but few. Because if you will ask them to read the Bible and then Another importance is you need a companion so that your companion may assist your Bible interest in opening the Bible. And if possible, you may even use their Bible in reading the text. Because sometimes people believe that we have our own Bible and our own Bible is different than their Bible, especially the Catholic. So, while you are using your Bible as leader, your companion is assisting your Bible students in opening the Bible. And then, if translation is different, try to reconcile and clarify that everything is the same. Okay, and the meaning is the same. Okay, so anyway, sabihan dyan, yun ang sabi ko sa'yo na simple method is needed. Ibang natin yan. At tingnan natin. So, how to present the Bible, study. By the way, next is complement to answers because 
Your Bible study way is what? Question and answer. So, complement good answer. Para nakakabos yun, ano? So, if you're going to complement the, right, the answer. And then, after participant read their answers, you may say, does anyone have a different answers? Pwede rin naman. So, kaya ang sabi dyan, the Bible study encourages each one to participate in the study. And then, encourage discussion. So, yun na yung ating ano dito. Ano pa? Sabi sa atin, always listen and ask questions. Verse 7, make brief and relevant comments as you go along. Stick to the subject and go. don't go sidetrack. And, alright? Number 8, never introduce ideas for which the Bible students does not have sufficient background. And that's the reason why Bible studies in the sequence and proper sabihin natin arrangement of topic. So, don't just go discussing the Sabbath on the very first Bible study. No, no, no. Huh? And sometimes we are even tempted to just discuss the topic related to the question. Don't do that. Follow the proper sequence of topic. Discuss first the foundational teaching teaching in which churches are sabihin natin it, kumbagay, common, sabihin natin something in common between churches, discuss topics that are basic. Then, proceed to the testing truth right there on after establishing the foundation. And then, number nine, read this text clearly, you have God's word in your hands. Kaya, don't read the text only in the home of your Bible student. You need to read it several times before the Bible study so that you can read it clearly during your Bible study. Kasi pagkaya ka hindi makabasa ng maganda, sabihin ng tao, nga ngayon lang yata ito nakabasa ng Biblia, kaya ang pagbasa ay hindi magkaintindihan. <laughs> okay, so, because you read it several times before going to Bible study, you can read your text clearly as well. Right? And the number 10, I think this is the last one, Huh? If a question deals with controversial lesson, do not hurry through the Bible study. Make its point clear before you move to the next topic. You know what? Let me tell you something about it. Let's say, after your second Bible study, your Bible student asked about the Sabbath. Are you going to discuss that immediately the next meeting? Don't do that. You may be saying, well, you may be saying, well, we're going to discuss that topic soon. But we need to discuss first the foundational teaching or foundational truth before we go on to the topic. And then, don't be afraid for questions. Because you may be afraid that your Bible student may ask questions too difficult to answer. But don't be afraid of questions. And if the question is too difficult for you to answer, you may be saying, well, that's a very interesting question. But because the question is covered on that particular topic, I'm going to answer that question when the topic is the topic that we're going to discuss in our Bible study. At least, you have been applied to it. <laughs> hindi rin nagmukhang, hindi mo alam ang sagot. <laughs> Did you get the point? Huh? Or, if the question is related to the topic and you find it difficult to answer, don't afraid and be shy to admit the truth by saying, well, since all of us are Bible students, and right now, I don't have a concrete answer to that question. Please, Brad, sister and sister, please allow me to study more on the topic so that I can give you a complete and then significant and satisfying answer to your question. And then prepare for the next meeting and then answer the question. Don't pretend that you knew everything. It's dangerous. <laughs> okay, yeah? Anyway. 
How about pastor? How about using illustration in Bible study? Do we need to use illustration in Bible study? Huh? Come on. Do we need to use illustration in Bible study? Yes. Anyway, we're going to close on this. Yan. Ito lang ilang mga ideas here. Sabi sa atin, an illustration drives on the point. And that's the reason why illustration is very important. Bagay, it's one important ingredient in giving Bible study to make your Bible study impactful and more interesting. Did you get the point? Hindi ka pag may mga kwento parang nakaka-interest ano? O kaya may mga analogy o mga comparisons. So it's important. But here are some reminders. By the way, on the positive side, it creates a deeper and more lasting impression in the heart and mind. Sometimes, a certain point emphasized with illustration are becoming impactful and will not just easily be removed and forgotten. That's the reason why illustration is very important. And then, it's like the window that brings in fresh air. Kaya mahalaga. And then, it must be short. But on the other hand, it must be sure. And then, of course, sometimes, in using comical illustration, make sure that it is appropriate. You know, I believe sometimes that using yung at least fun illustration is good. I believe. But sometimes, be very careful, especially, illustration will not open or discriminate other people. Nakakarnig ako, ginagamit lang ito sa sinyong mangyan. Yung mga mangyan ba na wala daw alam? It's very offensive. No, don't do that. And then, refrain from using cheap jokes. O kaya ay green jokes. Don't use illustration like that. Huh? And then, refrain from using offending illustrations because it may discriminate other people. So, do not have any time. We're going to close. I think we need to pray. But since we just reached slide number 48, meron pang kalahati kayong pag-aaralan na dun sa huli yung how to facilitate decision making for your Bible students. Andun din yung mga possible answer questions and the possible text that you can use as reference in answering questions. So shall we all stand? We're going to pray. We thank the Lord for giving us this chance to study some tips, some principles on how we will share the truth and the gospel. So dear Lord, it's quite difficult to remember everything. But we believe that those important concepts, if we will be able to integrate and apply it in giving Bible study and in finding interest, as the Holy Spirit will empower us, will be successful. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us in our discussion. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you, thank you. The best.